Hey, what's up, humans, spirits, whatever you identify with. (laughs) I'm Jade, and this is my first podcast. I pretty much just will give a brief introduction on this podcast, uh, letting you know what it is that I do, a little bit about myself, who I am, things I like, and then I'm going to get into some recent events So to start off with, this podcast is going to be mainly about healing, uh, natural healing, crystal healing, energetic healing, any kind of healing that does not involve negative type of things, but more so positive type of things like crystals, Reiki, Sakem, other forms of natural healing as I just mentioned. And things like that. I don't really dabble in astrology much, but um, I do do a lot of things in relation to the moon just because I feel a strong connection to the moon. So a lot of times I might have a podcast on or around the full moon or the new moon just because these are critical times in regards to manifestation or release. And they just line up with healing and all of the things that I care about. So a little bit about me. I have been collecting crystals since I was a little girl, thanks to my mom who got me started with amethyst when I was probably only four. And I used to ask my mom to take me to the nature store. It was called the nature company. I don't know if it's still around, but um, I live in Florida, by the way. And so pretty much I just started collecting crystals. So by the time I was maybe eight years old, I already had a whole box filled and I had them labeled. I've always been a major dork, so I always cared about their names and properties that they carry. And as I grew up, I had experiences with minerals, crystals, gems, rocks, whatever you want to call them. And I really just identified with them in a way that I would like to think of as special. They kind of felt like my friends. And so, yeah, I just had some natural, innate type of connection with them. And I knew how to use different ones for different reasons. Or I would sleep with some or just talk to them, just like imaginary friends or something. Just play with them, organize them. They always made me feel really good. So by the time I was in my early 20s, and I had been to many doctors at this point in regards to a health issue, you know, the doctors, and I had different doctors because I believe it's important to get more than one opinion on things, especially when they tell you that it will prevent you from behaving or acting in a certain way. It can hold you down clinically, etc. So of course I had multiple opinions. And um, so I had this medical issue, um, feminine issue in relation to my ovaries. And now my mother had had issues with her ovaries and uterus. My grandmother had had issues with her ovaries and uterus. And so it was natural that I would be gifted with this as well, karma, whatever you want to call it, right? And the thing is, nothing that the doctors ever did or told me to do gave me any kind of relief. And I was in severe pain a lot of times. And, you know, it just wasn't working. And I got the bright idea to try crystals, So I had a little pouch that my grandfather had given me and I wore it around my waist and I had researched which crystals are good for cramps or femininity and things like this. And when I placed them in the pouch and I wore this pouch, I realized I could actually walk. It wasn't pain-free, you know. Crystals are not something that's like shock therapy or something that's dramatic, like one time and then you're good to go. No, it's like a process with crystals. They're very subtle and the vibrations that, you know, they interact with our vibrations, the ones that they produce and we produce. And it's a very subtle art. And so, but after wearing the pouch for a couple hours, I noticed that it really helped. And I kept this trend up of just working with crystals and 
Over time, I became more interested in them because they actually worked for me, whereas nothing else in Western medicine had worked. Not even extreme pain pills had worked, you know, and I was crying in a fetal ball some days, unable to move, and it was just horrible. But then when I turned to crystals, I was reminded of the wonders of nature. So that's kind of how I got into crystals. Things evolved from there. I read a lot of books about self-help, spirituality, the fifth dimension, sixth dimension, the chakras, um, all kinds of different things, uh, plant intelligence even, um, just all kinds of things in regards to nature and crystals and healing and things like that. So at this point, I'm pretty familiar and um, they really changed my life in a big way. I feel like they saved me. And so, yeah, I, I like to study them talk about them, play with them still. I do crystal balances, which I can get into in another podcast, but this is more of just an introductory thing. I just want you to understand that I'm just like this crystal hippie type of woman. (laughs) And so, yeah, I mean, other people know me for being very spiritual because I went on to study other things such as Reiki, uh, Sakem, Violet Flame, and I do pendulum work where I communicate with my oversoul and my spirit guides only to get advice on things for everyone and for especially for my highest good. Never, never, never do I dabble in darkness because I have had experiences with darkness and I do not like it. And it was never good. It was never fun. It was never cool. It was never funny. So you can just think of me as like some crystal, natural healing, energetic working, frog loving, alien type of kind of childish actually young woman and that's who I am and that's what my podcast will be about. So in this one I want to talk about the new moon that just occurred in Sagittarius and I was having a lot of difficulty dealing with this new moon. I swear like I was feeling depressed a couple days ago. Something was just watching over me, washing over me, not watching over me, that's creepy. Um, Something was washing over me, like some kind of funk, and I was starting to get really upset, like, what's the point of my life? Like, all these existential dread type of questions, like, you know, just doubting myself. And then the haze kind of cleared, and I made an important decision, which was not easy, but beneficial for myself and for the other people involved for both of our health, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, in the present and in the long run. So I am proud of myself. Um, But anyway, yeah, new moon in Sagittarius. I mean, new moon is always a time of manifestation because the new moon is when we can't see the moon because the earth is orbiting around the sun And of course, our moon is in our own gravitational pull in relation to the Earth. So, you know, what happens is the Earth is in front of the sun. So, and I hope I'm correct, because that would just be really ridiculous if I wasn't. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not an astrophysicist, but I think this is pretty basic stuff. But I mean, it's when the Earth is in front of the sun So pretty much we cannot see the moon because the light from the sun is blocking it. And so we just see darkness. And this one in December 2017 is important because it comes at the end of the year, this winter moon, and everybody's getting ready for the new year and things to come and What it means is we can wish for anything we want, anything we want and dream about, but because it's in Sagittarius, we can't be fanatical, whimsical, hyper real or surreal about our wishes and desires. We have to be practical, pragmatic, logical, rational. That could be really difficult for people like me whose head is up in the clouds, you know, Aquarius type of people. And it's not easy making these decisions like what do I want you know a lot of us don't even know what we want and we blindly follow what is presented in front of us you know like what our parents guide us to do 
what our friends, peers, loved ones guide us to do, what society has guided us to do for centuries. I mean, it's not easy to dig deep within yourself and know what you want. But if you can just somehow take time every day and just even if it's as simple as making a list of what you like or what you dislike, like I like painting, I dislike snow. I don't dislike snow, but I prefer the beach. So let's just put snow on the dislike list. I'd rather live in a warm tropical place, hence Florida, than Alaska, which was awesome, but I wouldn't want to live there. So let's just start off like that, likes and dislikes. And then from then onward, you can just keep building that list of what I like and what I dislike. And then hopefully you'll get to a point where you really know what you truly want. And usually what people truly want is happiness, but that's not something that's given and definitely not something that can be achieved if you're just blindly following what everyone around you tells you to do. So anyway, I'm, I get carried off on tangents about things I'm passionate about. So this new moon is about manifesting your wishes, your deepest desires, but in a rational, logical way. And for me, that was to find a balance in 2018 upcoming. Find a balance between my dreams, my shamanism, my crystal healing, super spiritual stuff, and my reality as a human. You know, I have to work a full-time job so I can get money. To support myself, I want to be healthy, exercise, do yoga, things like this. But I want there to be a good balance. I don't want to get carried off into dreamland, but I also don't want to get sucked into the vacuum of I work, I make money, I sleep, I eat. No, it has to be in a balance. So that was my deepest wish was to find some balance in that and also to work on communication with my family. Now, that was my personal wish Um, And so because of that, I wanted to tell you about the crystal grid that I created during the new moon. So what I did was I had my mom write down her wishes on a piece of paper and fold it up. I didn't look at her wishes, I swear to God. And I also, you know, wrote down my wishes on a separate piece of paper and folded them up and put them underneath a quartz tower in the center of the grid. But that's last. What I what I like to do is I like to pick out the key crystals in regards to their importance and their qualities, and then I figure out the chart or whatever grid I'm using for that time. So for this one, I was using the Flower of Life, just laminated on a piece of paper, and I keep it a little elevated on the top of my bureau, just so that people don't knock into it and people can see that it's in a place where it deserves respect. I don't want people touching it, getting their energies all over it, you know. So of course all my (laughs) so of course all my crystals are cleansed with sage, palo santo, salt lamp, whatever it is. And I decided to choose most importantly was iolite, which is kind of a purplish, bluish, and I have a tumbled iolite, and I chose that to represent clear thinking and decision making encourages understanding and acceptance of the duality of existence, like I was talking about, and helps us decide whether people do or do not need our help. Because, you know, I've been dealing with a couple people in my life that I want to help them. I really want to help them, but you know what? It's time for me to help myself. And you have to help yourself before you help other people. So I chose it for that reason. And um, it also helps you consider a situation from all angles It combines science and magic and logic and imagination. So this was the keystone in my grid. Then I decided to go through my oracle deck, which is this Crystal Intentions Oracle Deck, Guidance and Affirmations by Margaret Ann Lembo. And it's a 42-card deck and guidebook. And I just decided to ask my spirit guides, crystal spirits, guardian angels, and what not to help me, you know, what crystals do I need? So I shuffled the deck and I pulled out peacock ore, which is this really pretty, you know, rainbow kind of psychedelic crystal. And I happen to have a couple of those because I've been told recently I need to use those a lot. So I have a couple of those at this point. And it represents happiness, confidence, optimism, grounding, flexibility at times of change. Really important if you're talking about a new year and new things. Detox. 
removes emotional blocks, stability, and free-flowing emotions. That was also a big one for me. Removes emotional blocks and free-flowing emotions. You know, I want those emotions to flow through me. I don't want to have these blocks because what happens is they get stored up inside of me and my communication fails. I blow up at my mom. I blow up at my boyfriend. You know, I need to have those emotions free flowing through me so that I can have the best reactions. So that's why I chose that one or even though I didn't even choose it, my spirits guided me that one. So then... I chose watermelon tourmaline, which balances your heart chakra on all levels. Um, I was guided to choose chrysocolla, which aids communication on many levels. Healthiness, mind, body, and emotions all balance. So, for me, it's all about balance, baby. It is all about balance. Yeah, watermelon tourmaline is really cute. Um, Chrysocolla looks really cool. It's a pretty turquoise color. Um, so Chrysocolla also releases anger and resentment. It heals old mental and emotional wounds and improves your peace. So I am really all about letting the old out, but I could use a little help. And then Labradorite, my personal favorite stone of all time, which represents flexibility, openness, protection. This is a this is key words right here. Heightens ability to focus on personal issues without letting external influences affect us. Okay? Now, with this new moon, this stone is really, really important right now because what's happening is Saturn went into Capricorn with this new moon. And what that means is that for the first time in 30 years, um, you know all of the boundaries or all of the preconceived notions or all of the guidelines, all of the rules, all of the whatever, like restrictions that have been created from society, from your family, from yourself even, they are going to begin to crumble. And with every death comes rebirth. So I chose this stone because allow for other people's... Oh no... (laughs) Allow to focus on personal issues without letting external influences affect us. This is so important. You need to build your own kingdom. This is the time to do it. The sun is even in Capricorn as well. So it's just proof that, and you know, the sun hasn't been in Capricorn since 1664. So it's been hundreds of years. This is a seriously awesome moment right now. Because all of these guidelines, rules, restrictions, boundaries, you know, these notions of what we can and cannot do, they're going to be stripped away and we can replace them with things that we care about, things that we feel we need to allow in our lives. And our lives affect people and everything around us on earth, you know. If we can just do the things that really truly make us happy, Everybody around us gets affected by that. So it's just for the best to fully liberate yourself. And Labradorite is a stone for that. Not only does it help let go of external influences, but it also allows for other people's difficult emotions or moods to not affect us in a negative way. Now, I'm not trying to be rude, but I just moved back in with my family. And so what's kind of happening is sometimes if you know, I'm in a crappy mood and my mom comes home from work and I'm like, get out of my room, me, 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 you know, she'll be affected by that. Or if she comes home in a bad mood and I'm like, I'm trying to do yoga. I just did a meditation. And she's like, oh, do this, do this, do this. I'm like, yo, I can't deal. And then we end up fighting. But the thing is, other people's moods should not affect you. If you are fully balanced and happy and zen-like, then other people's moods won't affect you anymore. So that's also why I chose Labradorite. Love you, Mom. (laughs) So then there's hematite, which quiets your mind, helps you maintain awareness and inner peace. Duh. We all want inner peace, right? Hematite. Then there's citrine, which was guided, a guided decision, as well as unakite and garnite from my Crystal Intentions Oracle deck. So citrine brings self-confidence, courageousness, awareness of personal magnificence, and mental clarity remembering your divine essence. I love that because divinity is within every person deep down inside. 
And that's where our truest wants, hopes, desires, and love all comes from, that divinity. We share that. We share that with the earth. We share that with plants, animals. We share that with crystals. Just remember that. So citrine helps with that. Unakite helps good connections with friends and family. Emotions are balanced. I react to others in an objective and loving way. So that's kind of the same thing that I was going for with the Labradorite. Um, And also good connections with friends and family. You know, I moved back home for a year. I'm chilling like a villain. Got my friends and family. I'm excited to be around them. But I want to have good connections only. I want to out with the old and with the new, you know. I don't have time for or energy to give where um, I don't feel like a flower needs to grow. So I've been letting go of friendships that haven't been beneficial and stuff like that. So Unakite helps with that. Garnet, I was using Garnet in my other crystal grid, so I had to use my rainbow Garnet in this grid. And Garnet increases self-motivation, stay focused and grounded, creative success and determination. So that's just, you know, I want to focus on me. I want to be grounded in the earth. I want to be self-motivated. I want to be creative. I do want to read a lot of books and learn a lot this year. And I'm determined to do it, so Garnet was perfect. Garnet is a really fiery stone. It helps things really just get going. And then indicolite, it's just blue tourmaline and um, it's just called indicolite. It balances your throat chakra, your throat chakra. So has to do with communication again. And I put that on the outside of my grid. And I also put rainbow moonstone on the outside of my grid just to be... I just love Rainbow Moonstone. I can't even lie. I love Rainbow Moonstone. And it's New Moon. So even New Moon, Full Moon, I don't even care. I will always add Moonstone to my grid. I just love it. And so, yeah, this grid was really important to me. And I'm really excited for the new year and everything that is to come. But I just want to remind everyone that, you know, this is the time to manifest. And there's a likelihood that what you wish and desire will actually physically manifest. So set your goals, mark your calendars, you know, by this time next year or by this time in two years from now, I guarantee you will have accomplished your goals. It's all happening right now. So plant the seeds now and stay determined, stay grounded, stay focused, stay loving yourself. And yeah, I'm just excited. I wanted to tell you guys about that grid. And also before I mentioned that the sun is in Capricorn. By accident, I made a mistake and I said sun in Saturn, blah. I meant to say that Saturn is in Capricorn and the sun is in Capricorn right now, which are both huge. And it's just really amazing because we have the opportunity right now to plant the seeds of anything we like and they will be watered if we water them. It's up to us, really. But nothing can hold us back anymore, and it's really positive and reassuring knowing that. And so to end this podcast, I know it's long. Thanks for listening, dudes and dudettes. But I wanted to pick a crystal card for my audience. So let me just shuffle here for a bit. i got to clear the deck. I'm clearing the deck, so give me a minute. Okay, what crystal does my listening audience need right now? What crystal does my listening audience need right now? What crystal does my listening audience need right now? All right, here it is. Apophyllite. I love you, Apophyllite. I've been sleeping with Apophyllite under my pillow. So Apophyllite. I meditate regularly. I am insightful. My connection with universal wisdom guides me daily. Access all information and knowledge available. Remember past lives as needed. Improve clarity during meditation experiences. Stay centered. Maintain a quiet mind. So... To all of you listening, Apophyllite, meditate, learn to meditate. Even if you just focus on your breathing, 
even if you just do the dishes and you don't worry about the chores, you don't worry about the laundry, you don't worry about the kids, you don't worry about the neighbors, you just do the dishes, that's a meditation. It doesn't have to be some guru swami BS, dude. It's just meditation is when you can focus on one thing. So when the thoughts come in your mind of other irrelevant things, you let them pass. So Apophilate reminds us, I meditate regularly. I am insightful. I am connected with the divine and they guide me daily. And, you know, with the help of the divinity deep inside of you and with the help of the crystals and the earth and the universal consciousness, etc., You do have access to all information and knowledge available. Even if it seems unclear right now and you can't understand it, just meditate on it. It might take a couple months, but I guarantee the clouds will pass and pretty soon you will understand what it is you were trying to understand. Maintain a quiet mind, stay centered. So I want to say thank you guys for listening and love and light to you all. Oh, and P.S. Tomorrow... Because the sun is going into Capricorn and it's also a dangerous type of time, please do not make any major decisions tomorrow. Mm, Tomorrow is December 21st, 2017. It is not a time to make extreme decisions because tomorrow will be the time when the decisions you make will affect the rest of your life. So, with that being said, just chill out tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow's a good day to start meditation if you haven't tried it before. If you have tried it before, tomorrow's a great day for meditating, appreciating everything you have, plant those seeds, and water them. Because flowers grow when you water them, and you have total control over your life right now. So, a lot of stuff happening right now, a lot of good things, a lot of crazy things, but... Most of all, stay centered. Apophilite will remind us of that. So with that, my podcast is finally over. Woo-woo. You don't have to listen anymore. <laughs> Love and light to all. Thanks for listening, though.